Hi guys, thanks for joining us for another edition of AquaFX.net, where we're gonna show you how to install a automatic shutoff kit in its entirety, as well as installation of a quarter inch float valve into our food grade storage container. Our two most popular sizes are the 18 by 33 40 gallon storage tank, and then we also have the 24 by 50 100 gallon storage tank. Now that is diameter by height. So first thing we're gonna do is look at our Barracuda unit that we've just taken out of the box. Looks nice and brand new. And we wanna set this up for automated use, meaning that it's gonna keep a constant level in a storage container. Whenever our float valve drops, the unit will turn itself on automatically, replenish the level until the float valve has reached its uh, height again. At that point, the unit will shut off the drain water, stop the product water, and be completely idle until the float valve is dropped again and the demand for water is called for. Um, First thing I'm gonna do is I've got my uh, tank automatic shutoff kit from AquaFX. Notice I've got my quarter inch float valve. I've got my quarter inch hydraulic automatic shutoff. And then I've got my quarter inch quick connect uh, check valve. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to identify on my automatic shutoff valve is going to be the sides where the words in and out are actually embossed into the plastic. This is very important and specific to pay attention to. Uh, if you have the valve reversed and you use the side with the screws, you're actually going to block the flow coming out of the unit and you're not going to create any water. The unit will essentially just stop. So again, keep, keep notice to the side where the words in and out are embossed and the sides where they are not embossed. This is very important. First thing you're going to want to do is go over to your Barracuda unit and identify where the water is coming out of the carbon filter you'll notice that the carbon and DI elbows are very close to one another. We wanna be sure not to confuse these. So, just as mentioned in other videos, the way that we get the tube out of the fittings is that we push with our fingers to, to hold the collar in, and while the collar's being held in, we simply pull the tube and it slides right out. To reattach this, we simply push the tubing back in, and this is good to go for many PSI. Now that I know where my pre-filtered water is coming out of my carbon filter, what I like to do is, is find where I'm gonna install my valve, maybe give it a dry fit. You notice that we have plenty of space right about here on the bracket as the water comes in from the pre-filters. What I'm gonna do then is just cut the tube right in place. Notice how I take careful time to give it a flat, clean cut, not an angled cut that could possibly lead to leaking. This is the portion that is pre-filtered water. It has passed through my sediment and my carbon filter. And again, it's the tube that we just identified. We're gonna take that and we're gonna plug it into where the embossed in, specifically only this one port in. So now, with same with all the quick connect fittings, we just push it in nice and firm and it's locked in. You can tell it's locked in also because you can pull on it with your fingers and it does not slide out. So now continuing on to the other side, we've got our embossed out or etched out as we refer to it sometimes and we're going to take the tube and just go ahead and plug that in so essentially we're just passing straight through the valve we're not taking any turns or loops we will now connect the reverse osmosis water or the ro filtered water through the automatic shutoff valve for this we can go ahead and take a look at our product on our waste tube you'll notice that the product tube is on top of the waste if the membrane housing cap is to your right so again, if the membrane housing cap is to your right, the product will be on top as you rotate the housing towards you. What I like to do here is similar to what we've just done with the pre-filtered water. Go ahead and, and on that product tube, give it a nice flat cut. Again, no hairs or strange angles. And I'm gonna grab my check valve. Notice that the check valve is directional. This is another one of those points where if you get this backwards, you're gonna block the flow of water and you're not gonna produce anything. So taking note of the flow of the check valve, the water will actually exit the membrane housing. So then we place it here where you can see the flow agrees with the arrow and we'll continue on. What we're now gonna to wanna to do is connect this check valve to what we're gonna to refer to as the non-etched in. So it is the same side as the etched in but it is on the back side where the screws are located. So in order to do that, I'm gonna grab a piece of quarter inch blue tubing that I had set to the side for this project. I give it a nice flat cut, just like we're used to doing. I push that into the other end of the check valve 
And again, now this other end of the check valve is going into what we call the non-etched in, which correlates to the opposite side of the etched in, but it has the screws. There's no words embossed on this side. So I push that in. Again, I'll check for a dry fit just with my hands, making sure the tube is nice and firm in place, and it is. And now we only have one final connection port. This is an important stopping point for everybody that just has a reverse osmosis unit, because at this point you can take this RO water, connect it to the float valve, which we'll be doing in just a moment, and you're ready for unattended automated use. For everybody with a DI filter, we're gonna continue on. And this won't matter if you have one DI filter, two or three, uh, it's kinda just uh, a broad spectrum. It'll take care of everybody from here. So again, I'm gonna just grab a, a length of blue quarter inch tubing, and I'm going to the last port, which is the non-etched out. It is opposite of the side where the word out is embossed, but it's the screw side, kind of the back, back side of that same fitting. I'm gonna push the tubing in, again, check for dry fit, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just route this quarter inch tubing to my DI filter. You wanna do this as neatly as possible just to keep uh, things from getting caught unnecessarily. So what I like to do with our Aqua FX aluminum frame is actually plumb it right through the, the back side of the frame. This will allow you to uh, mount the frame without anything getting in the way of the eyelids. It will also keep the unit looking very nice and, and uniform. And again, I'm just taking this tube and I'm connecting it to our DI filter. So I've got a little bit extra length here than what I need, which is good. We never want to be too short. I'm just gonna go ahead and push it into our DI filter. Again, with these quick connect fittings, you'll feel it seat past the O-ring. You give it a light tug to make sure it's, it's actuated the collar, and at that point, it will hold pressure. So, that is the complete automatic shutoff assembly installed. Make sure that the check valve is there. Make sure that your automatic shutoff is not backwards. These are two key points. Um, from there, we're gonna go ahead and install the float valve into our 40 gallon storage container. And we're gonna allow our DI water to fill up our float valve. But again, if you had the RO only, no DI, you would allow that to fill up the, the container. Float valve is up, the unit will stop the drain water and be idle at that point. So now we're gonna continue on to the second part of this video where we've got our 40 gallon storage container.